Hi, Paul Sackis. Good news planet. I'm here with Dr. Judy Olian. Hi, Dr. Olian. How are you? I am great, Paul. Thank you for inviting me. I'm very excited because I went to the university that's behind you, Quinnipiac. Uh, I graduated in 72 and uh, Dr. Judy has become the president since 2018. And I thank you because you're doing really well. That's Thank you, sure. Paul. And I, I don't mean to correct an alum, but I think we pronounce it Quinnipiac with the emphasis on the Quinn, Quinnipiac. Well, you can correct a, an alum and I'll tell you a, a, a good reason why. Because this week on Jeopardy, on Jeopardy, they had a question and they said, they were talking about cities and they said, what city's original name was Quinnipiac? New Haven, because it was the, uh, are the lands. This was, maybe you're going to correct me again, but my knowledge is that where we are, or where that whole area is, was the Quinnipiac Indians, or as you now call them, the Bobcats. Uh, is that right? You think I'm on to uh, something? I, I, the, there was no doubt that the indigenous communities here were uh, the Quinnipiac Indian tribes and others throughout Connecticut, yes. Uh -huh. A lot of Indian tribes. Well, part of uh, my, I was fortunate because Quinnipiac was, I don't know if I can say it any differently after 50 years, but uh, um, it, it was a great, you have the beautiful surroundings there. It was, for me, I grew up in Westchester County in Tarrytown and, uh, you know, the Sleeping Giant, the campus. And what is that picture behind you? What's going on there? So this was a happy moment uh, just a few weeks ago. This was one of 13 graduation ceremonies that we had for all of the students who graduated in 2021 and for the students who came back who graduated in 2020 and didn't get to have the commencement ceremonies. So we had 13 of them, we had uh, 13 ceremonies, we had two guests for students, we were outside, and it was a glorious celebration because for many people, not our students, but the faculty sometimes, and, and, and as a community, that was the first time they saw the full scope of what being part of the Quinnipiac um, family, the Bobcat family, was like. Now, we were on ground all year, which was very fortunate, but still, as you know, in the early part of the year, there were quite a few restrictions and still they continued uh, throughout the year, but our commencement ceremonies were a true celebration and especially for those who came back because they weren't together. So that's what you see, the parents and our graduating students uh, and, and really, and the weather was glorious. So it was a perfect celebration. And behind you, we have the library, beautiful, beautiful library. Correct, and the student center. And the student center, I remember that. And in the background, Sleeping Giant Park. I mean, Quinnipiac is, is beautifully situated at the foot of Sleeping Giant Park. Ah, the, the land is so wonderful over there. It's so, so, so breathtaking. And so, and, and has just gotten stronger You've expanded also, the school has expanded to not only this campus, right? Uh, you're in other locations as well. We have three campuses, close to 10,000 students. Uh, one is in North Haven, and that's where our health sciences graduate programs are, like physical therapy, occupational therapy, our nursing school, our law school, our school of education, and our medical school. And then we also have the York Hill campus, which is where our division one basketball and ice hockey teams play. And many of our upper class students uh, live there. And then the Mount Carmel campus is predominantly undergraduates and the residence halls are for the first and second year students. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. A beautiful, beautiful campus. Today um, is actually my uh, anniversary of being at Quinnipiac. It's the beginning of my fourth year, July 1. And I can tell you that the first time I came to Quinnipiac, 
I was blown away, nothing short of that, by the beauty of the surroundings, by the beauty of the facilities, by the beauty of the layout of the campuses. Well, that's good news, and we like good news. <laughs> let me let me just say, in, in addition to, uh, to you liking the Quinnipiac scenario, now this is though where she's coming from. I I do need to let some people know. I mean, you're coming from UC, UC, UCLA Anderson School of Management uh, uh, as the dean, uh, uh, and the Johnny Anderson Chair of Management for twelve point five years. Under leadership, UCLA Anderson hired a record number of faculty, expanded the prestigious uh, board of visitors, and raised over $450 million uh, for students and faculty support. You've been at other universities, uh, Pennsylvania State, University of Maryland. You are really a professional in education. And for Quinnipiac to get you, that is good news. <laughs> and so how do you feel about uh, you know, you've had an illustrious career. What do you like about education so much? So I, I'm an accidental academic, I have to tell you. I didn't plan this. I've always had, so, so my career has been uh, as a management professor, as a management consultant, and in business schools. And I've been fortunate to be kicked upstairs a few times, and, and I was dean of two schools at Penn State and at UCLA as the Dean of Business Schools. And to me, what is so inspiring about being in education and in higher education is, uh, and, and this is not an exaggeration, you transform lives in a way that keeps on giving. There is nothing more transformative for a person's life than education. I suppose if you went to the emergency room and you were resuscitated, that is transformative. But short of that, education is the gift that keeps on giving. It changes your opportunities. It changes the way you see the world. It changes the way you see other people. It helps you learn how to think. It changes your ambitions and aspirations. And it also broadens your thinking in ways that uh, perhaps initially make you uncomfortable, but probably broaden your horizons to see the world in, in broader, uh, more inclusive ways. And uh, there's no question the data show that, that the trajectory of one's career after they've had higher education is much steeper in the positive direction than if, if you hadn't. And our challenge is to make sure that every person has the opportunity to experience education throughout K through 12 and beyond. And to me, being part of that is such a privilege. And I see it every day, the way young people's lives are transformed and increasingly older people's lives are transformed through this opportunity because now we're in um, an era where we have to be consuming education for the length of our lives. I'm sure you know, Paul, and I experience it. Uh, what we knew five or 10 years ago isn't going to carry us to what we need to know today. We need to constantly be upgrading ourselves. So that transformation never stops throughout one's life. So that's the privilege and the excitement for me associated with higher ed. You, you know the right reasons of, uh, of why to be somewhere. And uh, I agree, it's such a, such so wonderful to, to, to be uh, supportive of those around you, and especially young people. And, and you know, I'm, I said I'm an accidental academic because I didn't plan on this. But when, you know, as Steve Jobs said in his one great commencement speech at Stanford, where you have to look back at your life and connect the dots. When I look back at my life and connect the dots, my mom, in Poland, before her interesting and difficult and challenging life that brought her to Australia and then, and then to Israel, my mom was a teacher and a, a lead teacher in a school in Poland. So I guess looking back, and I would never have predicted this, it probably is in the family genes. Okay, I can understand. My mother is uh, Hung Hungary. Uh, and uh, Poland and Austria, and uh, my mother's a librarian. 
uh, Temple Emmanuel here in New York so many, oh, many nice. years ago. Um, went to Columbia. And uh, uh, I can appreciate what you're, what you're saying. And uh, the school is, is not a young school. In 1929, I believe, is the original commerce uh, uh, aspect. Isn't that so? I mean, we've been around a bit. So, uh, yes, I haven't been around since 1929. I, 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 the, the, the like I was born last week. <laughs> it was, uh, Quinnipiac was founded in 1929. So we are looking towards uh, centenet, centennial uh, in 2029. Still have a few more years to go, but we're very proud of our roots, no doubt. And of course, uh, my predecessor, John Leahy, President John Leahy, who was here for 31 years, really escalated the growth and the breadth of the institution and much credit goes to him and his and his partners who uh, really helped build Quinnipiac. And it's a very comprehensive university. It has eight professional schools and the College of Arts and Sciences. It has medicine, it has law, it has business engineering, communications, education, uh, health sciences. I know I'm missing one and the College of Arts and Sciences. I have to think of what that one is. Um, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure I mentioned business. I'm sorry. Oh, the law school. Thank you. Right. And the law school. I, I, I might have nursing, mentioned. But the law school is a good one uh, as well. And well, we're very proud. And all of the interconnections among the schools, I think, mirror how the world of work is, is evolving that you can't say a problem is an accounting problem or an engineering problem or a finance problem or a purely a health problem. It's, it's usually somehow connected to business and law, health and engineering, um, psychology and sociology and health policy. So Quinnipiac is uniquely situated to make those connections. And Quinnipiac, I, I will say as a, an alumni, uh, has also been very, very uh, um, positive to alumni. You really consider your alumni, you communicate with your alumni. Uh, a couple of my buddies have, are so Bill Weldon and Bill Ayers and Flanagan, you know, guys that all I went to school with, you know, they're, I know, very proud to be part of the university and, uh, and as, as I am and others. and. Uh, because well, you went during a very illustrious year, though that's a, a great community, the class of 71, 72. We, we were lucky, you know, actually we were fraternity kinds of uh, YA Pi and Cairo and those groups. And uh, I don't know, it was a small school then, uh, but, a, but a loving school and uh, in, a, in a positive. It still we, is a I'm, loving school. I'm sure it is. And, uh, I, and I'm sure you're going to maintain that. Uh, because that's coming out of you right now. You, you and the heart equal each other. So this is all good. Anything else you'd like to say? I know you've been, you know, anything, then I'm going to ask you one last question or so. Um, anything else you'd like to add right now? Because I know you have a lot of stuff to do today. I would just say that as we approach the next year, we're really excited to, first of all, be back. Uh, we're going to be as close to the usual as, as we can be, and I think it will be very close. We are one of those um, 500 or so plus institutions that have required everyone to come back vaccinated, faculty, students, and staff. That enables us to have in-person everything and in, in a way that is really uh, something that our community of students, faculty, and staff craves. We don't want to be restricted anymore, and we feel pretty confident that uh, that will uh, be possible as long as everyone in the community is also uh, caring for themselves. We're in the throes of some very uh, important initiatives on campus. We're building a recreation and wellness center, taking into account the full person, not just their physical well-being, but their mental well-being, uh, their social well-being, and that's reflected in the, the way we've designed the, the health center. It's got a medical center too. It has an 
a counseling center, but it also has a test, kit, a test kitchen, a demonstration kitchen in there to learn how to cook healthily or nutritionally. It has programming space to learn how to deal with anxiety, family pressures, how to sleep, how to prioritize, how to deal with obesity. We want our students to graduate not just career ready and cognitively ready, but emotionally ready for the vicissitudes of life. We constantly are renovating our residence halls. The campus is beautiful. New programs introduced each year. This year, we're introducing environmental sciences and environmental policy and some other programs. So it's, it's an institution always on the move uh, with much, much to be proud of as an alum, uh, Paul, and we're incredibly proud of what you've accomplished over the course of your life. We'll take some credit for it, but I know take that a lot we're of probably credit riding, riding your coattails. Take a lot of credit for it. I really, I was in a very comfortable scenario there that allowed me to, to, to grow with wonderful uh, professors um, who were supportive and, and deans and uh, I mean, some with Evans and Palsy and, uh, and uh, Costanzas. I mean, I love these people. They were just so positive and reassuring and, uh, and it's all good. I just learned one thing though. I didn't know that our, the motto of the school is he who transplants sustains. That's the, tra the translation of the, of the Latin. He who transplants sustains. And I think that's actually kind of a very good motto for that school. Because yeah, or he who transforms sustains, yeah. Transforms is a, is a, is a, is a good one uh, as well. That same kind, because of, that's what the school has done. You, you keep growing. Well, you want, you want people, I mean, a mission statement talks about uh, developing and graduating enlightened global citizens for careers of the future. So we, we, it's not just about careers, it's also about really impacting communities in an enlightened way. And okay. that's never been more important. No, that enlightenment is, uh, is life affirming. It's all good. All right, well, the last, we're involved and might know about it. We have these Peace Day events that we've been doing with the uh, United Nations, 193 countries agreed to a day of peace. So I've asked many, many people, what does peace mean to them? And uh, uh, Dr. Judy Owen, what does peace mean to you? That is a, a wonderful question. I, I can think of it in two ways. I can think of it in terms of the context of how um, I live and I'm surrounded by. And I can think of it in the very broad context of, of um, global peace. I'll, I'll answer it in two ways. One, what does peace mean to me? It means seeing the transformational impact of what education is doing to the lives of very diverse students. And I had that experience of quote peace yesterday when I had lunch with uh, eight or 10 of our students at Quinnipiac who are doing public service projects in the community with state and local officials, helping kids in, from underprivileged backgrounds, helping the environment, helping a community like the local township of Hamden reach out to citizens, residents in need, uh, and seeing how that, may, that experience may change them as part of their education, that's exactly what, what transformation through education means, transformation through experience. To me, that really touches my heart and says, that's why you're doing what you're doing, Judy. Um, on a global scale, I, I think of two examples now, how privileged we are in this country that in those areas that have availed themselves of the tremendous, I mean, miraculous scientific advances that gave us COVID vaccines that enabled us to conquer a pandemic. Um, I wish that upon all parts of the world. To me, that is peace because everyone deserves it. 
And as somebody who has lived for a long time uh, in Israel and had, had roots in Israel, I wish that there can be a solution that recognizes the humanity of all people who live in that region. You are fantastic. <laughs> Thank you so much. You really uh, Thank you, Paul. So Thank you for being so easy to talk to and for, for prompting such great questions. And we ride your coattails. You make us very proud as a Quinnipiac alum, as a member of the Bobcat family. And I and I and I, I'm writing yours. And uh, it's always we're what we're all we are is what we are with each other. And that's the uh, that's the forward motion of life. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.